Binomial nomenclature of organism is used in A, ecology, B, taxonomy, C, embryology, and D, physiology. Obviously, the correct answer here is taxonomy. We know that binomial classification is also called binary classification, whereby two names are assigned to living organism. The first, the first name symbolizing the genus and the second name, the epithet, symbolizing the species to which it belongs. So the correct answer here is taxonomy. And don't forget that binomial classification or nomenclature was propounded by the Swedish biologist called Carl Linnaeus. So let's look at the second question. The diagram below is an illustration of an organism. We are to use it and answer questions two and three. So let's take a look at question two. The organism belongs to the phylum. Let's go back to the diagram once again and look at it. This is obviously a diagram of a bacterium, and we know that bacterium is classified under the phylum Shiso. Phyta. So let's look at the question. Number two, Shiso Phyta. So bacteria, all bacteria belong to the phylum Shiso Phyta. Also, blue green algae also belong to the same phylum. So the correct answer for number two is Shiso Phyta. Number three, the part that is made up of polysaccharide is labeled dash. Now we know we've established the fact that the diagram symbolizes the diagram of a bacterium and we know that the cell wall of a bacterium is made up of a polysaccharide referred to as peptidoglycan at times it is also called murein so the cell wall of bacteria is made up of a polysaccharide called peptidoglycan. So let's look at the diagram once again and look at which part is labeled. So you can see the label part one is obviously the cell wall. So the correct answer is Roman figure one. Let's go to number three and see which option. So Roman figure one. That is the part that contains polysaccharide, which is peptidoglycan. Now, it should be noted that the cell wall of a bacterium is different from that of plant because we are asked, both of them, even though both of them contain cell wall, the cell wall of bacterium, like I've established here, is made up of the polysaccharide called peptidoglycan. But the cell wall of plant is made up of the polysaccharide, which is called cellulose. And the cell wall of fungi is made up of the polysaccharide called Chitin. Let's move on to number four. Which of the following statements best defines a tissue? A tissue is a group of similar cells that perform a particular function. So the correct answer for number four is option A. A tissue is defined as a group of similar cells performing a particular function. An example of a tissue is blood. Blood is a liquid tissue because blood contains Similar cells like red blood cells, erythrocyte, white blood cell, leukocyte, and platelets, and they all perform a particular function. Bone is another tissue. So blood, bone, this are example of tissue. So the correct answer for number four is A. Let's take a look at number five. The diagram below is an illustration of a cell. We are to study it and use it to answer questions five and six. So if you look at this, this is a diagram of a cell. So let's look at number five. The part label one is dash. Let's go back to the diagram again. So this is the part label one. And obviously, looking at this, this is the mitochondrion. So let's look at the options and see which option contains that. So mitochondria, which is the plural of mitochondrion. So the correct answer for number five is B. Let's look at number six. The substance produced by the label part is, don't forget, the label part in number five was mitochondria. And we know that mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. What does that entail? That is the part of the cell in which energy in form of adenosyl tri 
phosphate is produced? So the correct answer is ATP. That is the energy currency of the cell. Let's look at number seven. The diagram below is an illustration. Talking about this diagram is an illustration of an experimental setup. We are to study it and use the diagram to answer question seven and eight. Even before we go to number seven and eight, merely looking at this, we can see that this experiment is an experiment to demonstrate osmosis in a plant, in a living plant tissue. Because you can see, yam cavity, yam is plant. And we can see that this is the control experiment. What is the experiment? We have a strong solution. So we already know that this is an experiment, experimental setup to find out about osmosis in plants. So let's take a look at number seven. The setup is used to demonstrate. So we can see option B, osmosis using plant tissue. So the correct answer for number seven is osmosis using plant tissue tissue and we know that osmosis is the movement of water molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of low concentration across a selectively permeable membrane so the correct answer once again for number seven is b let's look at number eight what will be the likely levels of the liquids in the trough and in the yam tuber labeled one after 24 hours let's go back to the diagram Again, so you can see from here, this is the path label one because this is the, the experimental one. This is actually serving as a control experiment. Now, this is a strong salt solution, which is hypertonic, whereas this is water. And we know that during osmosis, water will move from the trough air, will pass through the stem of the yam cavity and go into the strong salt solution, which is hypertonic solution so there will be movement of water from the trough into the yam tuber so the level of water in the trough will be reducing and on the other hand the level of water in the yam tuber will be increasing so let's look at the option that satisfies that the level of water in the trough like i've said will decrease whereas the level of water in the yam tuber will increase so the correct option here is definitely option C. Let's look at number nine. Which of the following organisms undergoes anaerobic respiration? First of all, anaerobic respiration is the type of respiration that occurs in the absence of oxygen. And look at the options given. The obvious choice is yeast. Yeast undergoes anaerobic respiration and in the process, yeast breaks down glucose to produce ethanol, carbon dioxide, and yeast. So once again, the correct answer is C. Let's take a look at number 10. The vertebra that has the most developed centrum is dash. The correct answer for this one is lumbar. Lumbar vertebra carries the majority of the entire body weight. And because of that, it has a prominent and well-developed centrum, which will provide an attachment for the abdominal muscle to carry majority of the body weight. So the correct answer for this is the lumbar vertebra, option C. Let's go to number 11. An earthworm fell into a hole that is filled with oil and it died. The likely reason for its death is that the... Now, let's look at the options. If you look at the option, the correct one there is option D. The body surface could not carry out gaseous exchange because of the oil. We know that earthworm does not have any specialized organ for respiration. What earthworm uses for respiration is the entire moist body surface. And moist in the sense that that is liquid, that is water. And gases like oxygen can diffuse into through that particular moist body surface through the water but oil gases like oxygen cannot diffuse through the oil and because of that when that particular earthworm fell into the into the, that particular hole the oil will actually prevent the moist body surface from carrying out the function for which it is designed which is gaseous exchange and when that particular earthworm is starved of oxygen it eventually dies that was what was responsible for the death of the earthworm. So once again, the correct answer for this is option D. Let's take a look at number 12. The structure in humans that connects the kidney to the urinary bladder is the ureter. 
Now, care should be taken here. So as not to confuse urethra with ureter. Ureter is the correct answer here because ureter are those two cord-like structures that connect the two kidneys, the right and the left kidney, to the urinary bladder. The urine produced by the kidney are carried by the ureters to the bladder where they are stored until they are passed out on the body. Urethra, on the other hand, is called a urinogenital organ. In male, for example, urethra performs a dual function. Number one, it serves as a passage for semen and it also serves as a passage for urine, hence the name urinogenital organ. So once again, the correct answer for this is option C, urethra. Let's look at number 13. The body temperature of homeothermic animals is always kept constant because, first off, what is the meaning of homeothermic? Now, Organisms, animals, are classified into two. Those that can regulate their body temperature are called homothermic animals. Humans, like you and I, are examples of homothermic animals. Organisms like fish, like reptiles, that their body temperature will depend on the temperature of their environment. We refer to them as poiclothermic animals. So, now that we know what an homothermic animal is, let's look at the question once again. The body temperature of homothermic animals is always kept constant because a metabolic activities functions at optimum temperature that's the correct answer because every metabolic activities as a matter of fact a lot of metabolic activities in our body are regulated are catalyzed by enzymes and we know one of the characteristics of enzyme is the function at optimum temperature if there's too much temperature they become denatured and because of that the bodies of homothermic animals are always kept the temperature always kept constant so that the metabolic activities function can occur at optimum temperature so the correct answer for number 13 is a let's look at number 14 which of the following plant hormones will not promote cell divisions in tissues oxen definitely promotes one of the functions of oxen is promotion of cell division gibberellin also helps in cell division Cytokylin also helps in cell division. So the obvious choice here is option C. Ethylene is a plant hormone. And the major function of ethylene as a plant hormone is it aids ripening of fruits. It doesn't bring about cell division in tissue. So for number 14, the correct answer is option C, ethylene. Let's take a look at number 15. The diagram below is an illustration of a mammalian structure. We are to study it and use it to answer questions 15 to 17. So if you look at this, this is a diagram of a mammalian brain. And you can see, you can see the various parts labeled 1, 2, 3, and 4. So let's look at what question 15. The illustrated structure is protected by the dash. We know, we've established the fact that that diagram represents that of a mammalian brain. And we know that the brain is protected by the bones of the skull. That is the cranium. So the correct answer here is option C. Brain is always protected by the cranium. Let's look at number 16. Which of the label parts is involved in the ability of a person to make the movement of riding a bicycle now riding a bicycle it involves balance for a person to be able to ride a bicycle that particular person must be able to maintain balance on that particular bicycle and the part or the mammalian brain that is concerned with posture and balance is the part to refer to as cerebellum so let's look at the diagram to see which part is labeled as the cerebellum so you can see you can see the cerebellum here labeled as roman figure 2 so let's look at the options and see which of the options is Roman figure 2? So, obviously, our option B. Don't forget, once again, cerebellum is the part of the mammalian brain that is concerned with balance and posture. Let's look at number 17. The part which controls Neil Jack is, first off, Neil Jack is an example of a reflex action. And we know that reflex actions are controlled by the spinal cord. So, let's look at the diagram once again and see which part is the spinal cord that is definitely roman figure four here so let's take a look at number 17 and see which option is roman figure four definitely option d so nail jack is a reflex action that is controlled by the spinal cord labeled as roman figure four let's go to number 18 short sightedness is normally corrected by now 
What is short-sightedness? Short-sightedness is also called myopia. That is the inability of a person to see far object. A person who is short-sighted can only see object close to him or her. And short-sightedness is always corrected by using a divergent lens or a concave lens. So the correct answer is option A. Let's go to number 19. The testes in humans are located outside the body because the that first thing first. Testes are the part of mammas where sperm cells are produced. As a matter of fact, the exact location where sperm cells are produced in the testes are called the seminiferous tubules. And we know that the production of sperm cells actually requires a temperature that is lower than that of the body. So if you look at the options here, we can see that the correct option for this is option B. Temperature of the body is too high for the production of spans. That's that. So that is why the scrotum, the scrotal sac are outside the body so that the testes can be at a temperature which is lower than the body temperature. So once again, the correct answer for this is option B. The temperature of the body is too high for the production of sperm. Hence, the testes are always outside the body so that it can be at a temperature lower than the body temperature. Let's look at number 20. The diagram below illustrates the cross-section of a fruit. We have to study it and use it to answer questions 20 to 22. Let's look at number 20. The illustrated fruit is a... Let's go back to, to the diagram. So, we can see here, from the diagram here, it's obvious that this is an example of a berry. So, let's go to number 20 and see which of the options contains berry. That's option A. It's obvious that that particular fruit is an orange. An orange belongs to the class of fruit regarded as a berry. Mango, on the other hand, is an example of a droop. So, the correct answer for this is A, berry. Let's go to number 21. The fruit is normally dispersed by dash. We know that after starting the fact that that particular fruit is an orange, and the major agent of dispersal of oranges are animals. And animals in this context even includes humans like you and I. So a person sucks an orange and then the seeds are just thrown anywhere. That is what dispersal is about. So animals are the main dispersal agent for this particular fruit here, which is definitely an orange. So the correct answer for number 21 is option C. Let's go to number 22. What type of placentation is possessed by the fruit? We know I've already specified that that is an orange, and we know that the type of presentation present in oranges is exile presentation. So for parietta, that one is present in purple, for example. If we're talking about marginal presentation, we're talking about presentation found in all these proteinous substances like cowpea, for example. So the correct answer for this is exile. Don't forget, even okra also possesses exile Placentation. And by the way, placentation is defined as the arrangement of ovules within the ovary. So the correct answer, once again, for number 22 is A, exile placentation. Let's take a look at the next question. Process which removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is dash. Obviously, the correct answer is A, photosynthesis. We know that photosynthesis is the process whereby autotrophic organisms like green plants manufacture their own food. As a matter of fact, one of the major ways of removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is through photosynthesis. If you look at option B, transpiration. Transpiration is the loss of water in form of water vapor to the atmosphere. If you look at respiration, respiration will not remove carbon dioxide. Instead, respiration will release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. The same goes for excretion. During excretion, carbon dioxide is also released to the environment. So the process that helps to remove CO2 from the atmosphere is definitely option A, photosynthesis. Number 24, the conversion of glucose to starch in a leaf during the day would that now we know that during photosynthesis that we just finished talking about air what is produced the immediate product of photosynthesis is glucose but glucose cannot be stored 
as glucose. It has to be converted to starch and stored. So that is the reason. And the correct answer here is option B, to enable the leaf to store its product. What product are we talking about here? Glucose. The glucose has to be converted to starch so that the starch cannot be stored in the leaf. So once again, the correct answer for number 24 is option B. Let's go to number 25. Chlorosis in leaves could be caused by the deficiency of dash. Let's first of all know what is chlorosis. Chlorosis is the yellowing of leaves and leaf margins. And what causes chlorosis is deficiency of magnesium. We know that magnesium is an essential mineral needed for the formation of chlorophyll. So if magnesium is deficient, we begin to notice certain yellowing of leaves. So deficiency of magnesium is one of the things that are responsible for yellowing of leaves, what we refer to as chlorosis. So for number 25, the correct answer is option C. Let's go to number 26. Which of the following substances is secreted by cells in the stomach of a healthy human? The correct answer for this is hydrochloric acid. We know that the pH of the stomach is between 1 to 3, which is extremely acidic. And what is responsible for that extreme acidity is hydrochloric acid. As a matter of fact, the cell of the stomach that produces hydrochloric acid in the healthy human is called the parietal cell or oxyntic cell. Parietal cells. Parietal cells. It can also be called oxyntic. Oxyntic cells. So, Parietal cells or oxyntic cells, those, those are the epithelial cells present in the stomach responsible for the production of hydrochloric acid. So for number 26, the correct answer is option A. Let's go to number 27. The vitamin that is required for the clotting of blood is dash. The correct answer for this is vitamin D. Remember that we have different vitamins and each of the vitamins play certain role. And when they are deficient in the body, they cause certain deficiency diseases. But for vitamin K, the major function of vitamin K is to allow clotting of blood. So a person who is deficient in vitamin K, now we experience what we refer to as hemophilia. That is inability of the blood to clot easily. For example, deficiency of vitamin C causes coffee or gingivitis. Gingivitis is talking about bleeding gum. Not only that, deficiency of vitamin E causes infertility. But the correct answer for this is vitamin K because deficiency of that will lead to blood not clotting easily. So vitamin K is necessary and required for proper clotting of blood. Let's go to number 28. The purple color a purple color was observed when sodium hydroxide solution and a drop of copper sulfate solution were added to a food substance. The food substance likely contains dash. The correct answer for this is protein. As a matter of fact, we know this is talking about biuret test. And we know that biuret test, million test, santoproteic test, all the three tests are used in testing for protein. And we know that a positive result done by urea test is a purple color. So the purple color that is observed when NaOH and CuSO4 were added to a food substance, we also we always indicate the presence of protein. However, if protein is absent, having added sodium hydroxide and copper sulfate, the solution will remain blue. The Manifestation of purple color is what gives a positive result, telling you that protein is present. Let's go to number 29. People living in an overcrowded compound with a poor toilet facility will likely suffer from dash. That's obviously cholera, because if people are living in an overcrowded compound, not only that, with poor toilet facility, there are chances that they might be practicing what we refer to as open defecation. And flies can easily perch on those human excreta and if there are cooked, uncovered food. And these flies actually contaminate them. Anybody who consumes such a food can come down with cholera. So the correct answer for number 29 is option C, cholera. Let's go to number 30. 
An ecosystem involves the interaction of dash. An ecosystem always involves interaction of the living organisms and the non-living parts, which is referring to all living and non-living things. That's that. So an ecosystem comprises the two of them, the living organisms, that's talking about the biotic factors and also the abiotic factors. So the correct answer for number 30 is...